let's have a have a little church. Hey, 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 come on, let's have a little church. Well, they said, come on, all you name oh this sacred day come on let's have have a little church well come on let's have a have a little church yeah, come on let's have a little church Oh, they said, welcome out on this day. Well, come on, let's have, have a little church. Well, you know, in the old time way, we had a little church. Well, in the old, old we had a little church, yeah. They said, can't nobody, can't nobody come on, let's have, have a little church. Well, listen, every Sunday morning, you know, the deacon would read a scripture. You know, the deacon, he would say your prayer. The preacher would preach God's holy word, and the spirit began to move everywhere. And they said, oh, Come on, come on, let's have a Whoa, come on, yeah, come on, let's have. Have, why don't you clap your hand right now? Give God some praises. Have the Lord been good? Yeah. Come on, let's have. Go, oh, come on. Come on, let's have. Have. Whoa, we're gonna have. We gonna have. We're going to have a little church, yeah. We're going to have a little church. One thing I found, yeah. One thing that I found. A little church won't hurt y'all. Little church won't hurt. When things are going bad, yeah. You can have a little church, yeah. You don't need to be at church. You can have church on your job. You can have a church in your car, yeah, while you're on your way home from work. Just have a little church, yeah. Thank God for being so good. Didn't he wake you this morning and started you on your way? We come to have a little church, yeah. We come to have a little church. Whoa, oh, come on. Come on, let's have. Whoa, come on. Come on, let's have. Say it one more time, yeah. Come on, let's have. Have a little church. Come on, let's have a little church. Let us quieten our heart for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you this afternoon just as humble as I know how. First of all, Lord, before I ask you for anything, I just want to thank you for everything that you have done. And I'm going to thank you for everything that you're going to do. Father God, as you're taking your ride this evening, I ask that you would ride on by the hospital. There is someone laying on their bed of affliction, Father God. The doctors may have given up on them, but Father God, you got that final say so. Father God, I ask that you don't stop there. Keep on riding by the nursing home. Father God, touch, heal, and deliver. Oh, Father God, and don't stop there. 
Go on by the servant home, Father God. Oh, Father God, you know all about them, and you know what they stand in the need of. Father God, and I ask that you don't stop there. Keep on riding, Father God, because so many that are in bereaved, Father God, that I ask that you would just touch them, Father God. Let them know that earth have no sorrows that heaven cannot heal. And Father God, I ask that you would stop on by here, Lord. We are getting ready to go into service, Father God. I ask that you would bless, bless and touch the evangelist from the crown of his head down to the sole of his feet. Father God, whatever you've given him, let he's going to give it to us. Father God, we need to open up our ears and our hearts and to receive it where we can go out and spread it. Bless us, Father God, and I know we shall be blessed. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. <laughs> So when my way is dark at night, I go to the Lord. He'll show me the light. Take your burden, take your burden, take your burden, take your burden. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. We have a selection by the guest choir. We have words of welcome by Sister Matilda Buford and the offertory prayer by the deacons and the ushers. In that order, please. You don't know like I know <laughs> what a life <laughs> you can be telling what is that for me? Hey, you don't know. You don't know. Oh, well, the Lord is down for me. Oh, well, the Lord well, let me tell you what he does. He gets the sun. He gets the sun. He gets the sun. He gets the sun. He on the cross. He gets the spirit. He my back. He gets the sun. Said, oh, oh, yeah. 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 That the one is done. You can't hey, tell hey. it like I can. Hey, what a lovely son of a bitch. Well, just let me tell you what he's done. He gave his son. 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 He g
And I just want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You've been good to me. Thank you, Jesus. It's all good to me. You woke me up this morning. Thank you, Jesus. You me on my way. Thank you, Jesus. I can still tell it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You save my soul. Jesus, you, I'm so glad about it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You don't know. You don't know like I don't. Yeah, but the Lord is so What is that for me? Can't hey, tell it, no. Can't hey, tell it like I can't. Yeah. Now, I'm supposed to follow that. I'm supposed to get up here and welcome y'all after hearing that. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. You know, God didn't have to do it. Oh, but he's so good that he did. It's my task this afternoon to um, welcome our visitors. And um, first, we'd like to acknowledge our worship leader this morning, Sister Deaconess Paul, doing a fine job. To uh, Dr. Hatchett and his family, to Dr. Reverend Dr. Jones and his family, <laughs> and to each and every one that has decided to come out and worship with us on this last night of our revival. Truly, we have been blessed. I wasn't here last night, but I was on my phone, so I watched it. So I was still here. Wasn't in your midst, but I was still here listening to the word. And so now to our visitors, we would like to welcome you to COBC. Now, when we come to God's house, we really shouldn't need a welcome. If we are God's people and we say we are God's people, then when our visitors show up here, we need to make them feel like family. Now, I'm trusting and believing that our County Line Baptist Church family treated you that way when you stepped off the grounds and when you walked into the sanctuary. I am trusting that we are Christian enough here at CLBC to open our arms and give you a hearty welcome. And so after hearing the singing, after getting the warm smiles and hugs, y'all are welcome now, okay? So now that all the formalities are out the way, you know what you need to do. Because when the word comes and the singing comes, I don't need to tell you that you need to show God that you're thankful. You need to show God that you're grateful because he's been so good. And so I'm going to go to my seat. I'm welcoming you once, welcoming you twice. We welcome you at COBC in the name of Jesus Christ. Be blessed. First, I give my honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to our pastor-elect, Mario Hackney, and pastor, guest speaker, Jones. Welcome to the congregation. 
Good evening to everyone. My task is to be up here, say a few words, and also take time for everybody who mean it with the service. Taking that off. Also take time. Tell me who do you think woke you up early this morning? Tell me who do you think started you on your way? That's why we. Better. Tell me who do you think stepped in right on time? Nobody but he made it possible. Tell me who do you think put food on your table? Nobody but that's why we are Tell me who do you think woke you up early this morning? Tell me who do you think got to do all your work? He made it possible. 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 Do you food on your table? But he made it possible.
Father God, we come, Lord, thanking you, Lord, on this day, Lord. Lord, thank you for this offer. Thank the one who had to give and thank the one who did not have to give. May this, Lord, may this offer be using, uplifting your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus made it possible. All right, we just took up the offering. We got all of that out of the way. Now we'll have the introduction of the revivalist by Pastor Hatchett. We'll have two selections by the guest choir. P Pastor Jones is going to come and give us, the, give us the message, the invitation to discipleship, the invitation of him, the benediction. He will close it out in his own way. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I guess my son decided he wanted to praise the Lord because the Lord made it possible. Amen. Amen. My task is easy tonight because if you've been here on Wednesday night, if you were here on Thursday night, then Friday night, this preacher needs no introduction. Amen. And I know that's what he wants me to do. <laughs> but nevertheless, I come to introduce Reverend Larry Jones. Amen. He is the pastor of the Christian Compass Ministries in Stone Mountain, Georgia. He is anointed. He is appointed. And he is sent here for such a time as this. Amen. Amen. So do me a favor. Don't you get comfortable. Don't you take off your shoes. Don't you relax. But get ready to have your faith challenged and your spiritual walk pushed a little further. He raised a question last night that out of all my eight, nine years of seminary, it made me sit there and say, hmm, that's good. And I am standing in expectation of what he's going to do tonight. Amen. Do me a favor, stretch your hand towards the preacher and say, preacher, on the last night of revival, I need to be revived. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to need prayer for y'all to pray for me that I sing this song all right. How many of you know better days are on the way? I said, how many of you know better days are on the way? Sometimes it feels cold. And you feel all the love. Oh, oh, better days are coming. It can be in the way. 
I know it ain't easy. But just hang on in there. Better days are coming. You said go. You said It's been hurt, Beyonce. But just remember, better days are coming. We'll leave you all by yourself. Don't you try, cause better days are coming. So better, better is that Sing it with me, family. Is that the that you're going through? So stay focused and never lose sight. But just keep on smiling and know that everything's going to be all right. And don't Oh, you 
you love me. I ain't going nowhere until you bless me. I ain't going nowhere until you bless me. You don't bless me, Lord. I can't make it anywhere, Lord. So please, 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 bless me. Oh, I ain't going nowhere until you bless me. I ain't going nowhere. Let's be. And you don't bless me, Lord. Ain't making it all. Let's be. Let's be. Let's be. I got faith in you. I got faith in you. And I trust you too. And I trust you too. I'm going to sit and wait. I'm going to sit and wait. But you're never too late. But you're never, never too late. late. I got faith in you. I got faith in you. And I trust you too. And I trust in you. I'm going to sit and wait. I'm going to sit and wait. But you're never too late. But you're never too late. You, I, I got faith in you, and I trust you too. And I trust you too. I'm gonna spin and wait. I'm gonna sit and wait. But you're never too late. But you're never too late. Let go, please, please, please. Let me. Yeah. I'm gonna stay right here until you bless me. I'm gonna stay right here until you bless me. Bless me, Lord. Can't make it at all, Lord. So please, 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 bless me. I got faith in you. I got faith in you. I trust you too. I trust you too. I'm going to sit and wait. I'm going to sit and wait. Because you're never too late. You're never too late. In you. I got faith in you, and I trust you too. And I trust you too. I'm gonna sit and wait. I'm gonna sit and wait. Cause you're never too late, oh, Lord. Too late. I got faith in you, and I trust you too. And I trust you too. I'm gonna sit and wait. I'm gonna sit and wait. Cause you're never too late. Cause you're never too late. So please, so please, please, please. Let's me. Oh, I said, let's meet. I need you in the morning. Let's meet. I know you're here and in the prayer. I remember it all. Let's me, Lord. I didn't know what to do. Let's me, Lord. I called on your name. Let's be. I heard that you answered my prayer. Let's be. Then I can stand and tell the world. Let's be. You've been good to me. Let's be. You hear my body, yeah. Bless you me. made my soul, yeah. Bless you me. made the whole one there. Bless me. Yes, I am. Bless me. Come on. Bless, bless me. me. Do you need him to bless you? Bless me. Anybody out here need a bless me? Then keep on selling. Oh, bless me. Then bless me in the morning. Bless me. Then bless me in the new day. Bless me. Bless me in the evening. Bless me. Yeah, Lord, I ain't going nowhere until you bless me. Well, I ain't going nowhere until you bless me. Well, oh, bless me, Lord. I can't make it at all. Lord, so please, please, bless me. Come on, let's stand and give the choir a big hand. Why don't you do that for me? Amen. Come on, let's praise God like we mean it tonight. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know whether you watched any of the Democratic National Convention or not, but I don't know what it was. Wednesday night, I guess the Obamas spoke, and Barack got up and he said, "Only a fool would come behind Michelle to speak." I feel kind of the same way tonight. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with this crowd back here. If you all don't know that, these are these are the M. R. Jones 
singers. Amen. That stands for Maynard Robert Jones. Amen. Who happens to be my brother. Amen. And so I'm just glad to be with you tonight and glad to have them backing me up tonight. Just, just glad to. <laughs> amen. Amen. I thank God for you tonight. I bless God for you tonight. Um, I was telling my wife today, we, we may just want to stay around till next week. Just uh, see what really goes on here. At, what did somebody say? CLCB? That <laughs> you all are a marvelous congregation. And I am just proud and pleased to have been with you this week. And I thank God for the opportunity that he gives us to be together. Uh, it's been a marvelous experience. I, I thank you so much for your love and for your kindness, your hospitality, for your greetings each evening. And uh, you, you've made this a very special time for us. And um, although we're going to catch this flight going back to Atlanta uh, so they won't mess up my church on Sunday. But, um, but I'm just glad to, to be with you and, and thank you. Thank you for coming each night and thank you for being there. And I pray that God continues to bless you and bless your pastor. To your pastor, I just want to say thank, thank you for being kind and being gracious. And I got to meet his wife tonight. Amen. Uh, Jordan, is it? Come on, let's give her a big hand. She's, uh, she's, sounds to me like you've got a couple that's going to lead you places. So I thank God to the officers and members and friends and visitors. Um, I started my, my employment out of law school in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I ended up tonight sitting next to some folks from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, who came to be with you tonight. And so uh, God is good all the time, all the time, all the time. I just want to say a word of thanks to the to uh, the Walker family. Carolyn and Chris have been just very kind, and and to my nieces and and nephews, and to the MRJ singers. I am just proud to be with you, and and glad that you could make it tonight and to be able to be with us. Uh, I thank God for you. Uh, when I get back to Atlanta, I'm going to tell the folks about County Line. They're going to need more than a GPS to find it, but <laughs> but I'm going to tell them about County Line. And, and uh, you all are just a special group of people. And so so that we're not here until midnight, I better get started, I guess. Um, thank you again for inviting me. And uh, I pray God will bless us to see each other again at some point. Well, let's see what God has for us tonight. Would you, if you turn with me to the book of Psalm, to Psalm. Uh, the 92nd Psalm is where we will, we will begin this evening. You pray with me and pray for me. We won't be here too long. You stand with me as we share, beginning there at the 12th stanza of this 92nd Psalm. And when you get a chance, you may want to just read the entire chapter. This is a marvelous passage of Scripture, as they all are. But uh, tonight we're looking at something very special, I think. Beginning there at the 12th stanza, the psalmist says, The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock, mm, and there is no wickedness in him. Let us pray. You may be seated. Oh, holy God, you, you have brought us a long way. And you've been with us through this week, and we thank you. And here we are now on Friday evening, and we're glad to be in the house of God one more time. So come, come right now, God, and speak to your people. 
come, come and minister to them and, 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 and show them up on every leaning side and have them to know that you are still God and you're still with them. Bless your word tonight. May it fall on fertile soil that somebody might leave here tonight knowing they've been with you. And we thank you, we bless you, we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we close out tonight on this Revival Week, I want to leave a word for the church. Amen. I want to leave a word for County Line tonight. And I want to preach from this thought. A church must grow in righteousness. A church must grow in righteousness. A church, that means us, must grow in righteousness. My brothers and my sisters, growth and maturity are critical and indeed essential for all of us. If we do not grow, generally it is because of some malady, some illness. And so it is with the Christian, growth is essential. For it seems to me that if nothing else ever happens to a Christian, at least we ought to grow. Because if you tell me that you are a child of God, that you love the Lord, that you've been dedicated to his will and his purpose, that you desire to walk in his way, that you've been plucked up by the plowshares, and that you've been born again and turned around to go in a new direction, that God has established your going and your coming, put a new song in your mouth and put a new prayer in your heart and placed your feet on a rock of eternal ages, that you ought to be better, you ought to be better today than you were yesterday. You, you, you may never reach perfection, but you ought to grow. You ought to grow. Jesus didn't pick any of his disciples because they were already perfect. If, if you study the biblical narrative of the men Jesus chose to carry out his mission, you would wonder how the church ever got off the ground with such a sorry lot. You see, Jesus knew that when he chose Peter, that Peter had a hot temper, that he was quick to act. But perhaps he, he reasoned that by walking with a milder master, that Peter might calm down a little bit, come in control of his emotions and in control of his life. Jesus knew that when he picked Peter, Thomas, Thomas was a doubter and a skeptic and wouldn't believe anything he couldn't see, taste, touch, or feel. But maybe, hello, Jesus, maybe by walking with Jesus, he could engender some faith and come to believe in something he could not see. He, he knew that Matthew was a thief and a rogue, that he was stealing from the treasury and that he would steal from the people. But perhaps he reasoned that by walking with an honest leader, some honesty might rub off on him. John said Judas was a devil from the beginning, but, but Jesus chose him anyway. He, he did not choose a single one because they had already arrived at the gate of perfection. He chose each one because in him was the potential for being better. And I am convinced that you ought to be better now than you used to be. You ought to be better tomorrow than you are today. Christians ought to grow. You ought to grow. You ought to grow. And so, and so, my brothers and my sisters, the question before us tonight, the question before us, the question before County Line tonight is how ought Christians to grow? In our text, the psalmist provides a poignant picture of how Christians ought to grow. He, he, he says there, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. They shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Now, now in, in part A of verse 12, the, 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 the writer talks about flourishing. And, and I'm glad he didn't stop right there at that verse, at that part A of verse 12, because it seems to me that there are too many flourishing Christians and too few growing ones. 
You see, you see, now it's all right. It's, 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 it's all right to flourish. There, there's nothing wrong with flourishing. Christians are to flourish. You see, to flourish means to appear well. Help me, Jesus. And to look good. You, you understand. There, there's certainly not, nothing wrong with that, but surely the Lord's folks are to look better than the devil's crowd. But looking good is not enough. What you need to do is grow. And I want to suggest to you tonight that if I can tell you how a cedar grows, help me, Lord, you might come to understand and get some idea as to how Christians are to grow. Is that all right? You all with me? Well, let's, let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. First, if you take a look at verse 14, the psalmist says there that the cedar tree stays fresh and green all year round. If you think about it, the cedar tree stays green all the time. Now, now, if you sever it from its roots and rob it of its nutrients, take it out of the ground, it'll turn brown and die like any other tree. But leave it in the ground. Let it drink from God's water. Let the rays of God's sun bathe the tree on a daily basis. It'll stay green all year round. I think that's the way a child of God ought to be. Don't you? We, we, we should develop a consistency of character, a, a permanency of behavior. Our personality should dictate that, 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 that God lives on the inside of us all the time so that when we see folks, they will see us the same all the time. You see, you ought not get up in the morning and, 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 and then look some other way around noon. You, you know, get up with a smile on your face, and by noontime, you got a frown on your face. You shouldn't be like those fist-straddling people, you, you know, who, who don't know which side of the fist they want to be on. We shouldn't be hot and cold Christians, being Christ-like when it's convenient. There ought to be some consistency in our character so that when folks see us, they will know we are different. When they talk to us, they will know that we are children of the God most high. We ought to be green all year round. Now, let me, let, me, let me see if I can give you an example of what I'm trying to say. The story is told of a preacher. Now, I don't know why they pick on preachers. Normally, it's the lawyers, but they, they tell me about this preacher, and I think it may have been somewhere in Richmond, who got on a bus one Monday morning. It, it was back during the time when, when the bus driver carried chains. Some of, some of y'all remember. Uh, uh, they don't dare do that anymore. But, th but they used to have a time when the bus driver could give you change when you got on the bus. He had a little contraption that had nickels and dimes and quarters. And, and, and if you gave him a dollar, he could give you some change. And the good drivers could do that thing real fast. They could click it and give you your change real quick. Well, the preacher got on the bus, paid the bus driver, and, and the driver gave the preacher his change. But in the process of giving him his change, listen now, he gave him a quarter too much. The preacher took the change and put it in his pocket and went to sit down and began to ride, but, but, he, but he couldn't sit in peace. Something began to bother him and, 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 and began to eat at his conscience, and his spirit became troubled. So he got up and started back to the driver. But he stopped midway of the bus, and he said, turned around and said to himself, it's the driver's fault that he gave me too much money. It's the driver's fault that he can't count. And he went back to sit down. And, and, but that quarter just kept getting on his mind and wouldn't give him any peace. It kept bothering him. So he got up again and went back toward the driver. And again, he stopped by the middle way of the bus. He said, now, really, it's the company's fault. They shouldn't be hiring people who can't count. See, my, my, brothers, my brothers and my sisters, isn't it strange? Don't you find it strange that we who profess to be right can take what we know is wrong and twist it around and try to make it right anyhow? I mean, but that quarter, <laughs> that quarter just kept growing in his pocket. You know, it got bigger and bigger in his pocket. It passed the 50-cent piece, got on up near the 75-piece, 
and, and, and he just couldn't steal. So he jumped up and he ran back up. And he didn't stop this time. He ran back to the driver. He said to the driver, here's your quarter. When you gave me my change, you, you made a mistake. The driver looked up at him and said, no, Reverend, I didn't make a mistake. I, I gave you your change. And when I did so, I knew I gave you a quarter too much. He said, you see, Reverend, you don't know me, but I know you. <laughs> and I, I was at your church yesterday, and that was a great sermon you preached on honesty. And I just wanted to know if you believed what you were preaching. Count the line, count the line. You see, you see, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Say, the folks in the street got their eyes on the folks in the church. And if the church don't act right, you can't expect anybody else to act right. We ought to stay green all year round. Oh, yeah, now, 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 next, next thing. The, the, the cedar tree always grows down before it grows up. You see, the root structure of that tree is different from any other tree. When you go back home, now, you may not be able to do it tonight, but when you go back home, if you have an oak tree, you, you will find that the oak tree has some roots that spread out over the place. It got a network of roots, and they'll spread all over your yard. Check your poplar trees. And they have, they send out a mesh of roots everywhere. You can't even mow your grass because of these. And, 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 but then there's that cedar tree. That cedar tree has this one little tap root that grows straight down in the ground. And it does not have that network of roots to anchor it and keep it strong. That one little root has to hold the tree in place. And it is as though the tree has sense enough to know that the top can't get supported until the bottom gets anchored. Y'all stay with me. So, 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 so it goes down in the ground. You can't see it growing, but it's growing. And, and, and when it gets anchored in the ground, then the tree and the top grows up. That's the way a child of God ought to be. See, see we need to get anchored in something before we try to show off. You see, we got a lot of show-offs in the church. I, I don't know about counting line. Y'all know better than I do, but there, we got some show-offs in the church. You, you know what I'm talking about. Folks who sing for glory. Folks who usher to be seen. You, you know, folks on the trustee board who, who can't be trusted. We got some strange people in the church. We need to get anchored in something. Now, now we take folks in the church. We try and fellowship them and try to show them God's way, and give them an opportunity, and, and they become part of the fellowship. We put them in an organization, and every now and then we appoint them to some key position. And as soon as they get to the top, they stick their heads up in the air like an NBC peacock, strutting around and stepping on the people who help them get where they are. My friends, we need to get anchored in something. Some folks don't want to wait for anything. They join the church this done Sunday, get on the choir next Sunday, want to sing a solo the next Sunday. You need to get anchored in something, grounded in something, and then you're ready to grow up. Help me, God. Listen, listen. There's one other thing I want to tell you about that cedar tree. And, and, and that is that the root grows down in the earth, and it never stops growing until it reaches water. You see, the, 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 the remember, remember now, the text, uh, the writer is talking about the Lebanon cedar tree. He talks about that cedar tree that is planted on top of Mount Lebanon. The, the Lebanese mountain range is one of the highest in the world. And that cedar tree that grows on top of Mount Lebanon has to grow down through that mountain and it will not stop growing until it strikes water. Because it is in the water that the basic nutrients of life provide the elements of survival. And the tree cannot survive until it gets back to God's basic creation. Now, 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 I just want to suggest to you tonight that every now and then, you don't have to do it very often, but every now and then, you need to go back 
to where you came from. So you can understand where you came from and where you are and where you and how you got over and who got you over every now and then, every now and then. Sometimes, sometimes my brothers and my sisters, I I long for the old home place. And and whenever I get a chance, I go back home. Now, now I, I said to you last night, I grew up in Buckingham County. Some of y'all know where that is. Um, in 1958, my father died, and in 1993, my mother died. Of my 10 brothers and sisters, only two of us are still living. And at times, it's, it's sad and lonely when I think about it. And uh, even though I got special nieces and nephews, help me Jesus, who, who know how to sing, um, I, I just don't have the urge to go back uh, very often to Buckingham. I, I don't have a strong yearning to visit the place, but every now and then I, I drive back home. And, and when I leave Atlanta, I go up Interstate 85 North, and, and I cross over the border into Virginia. I take a shortcut down through Danville and then over into Lynchburg, and then on to Buckingham County. And then I go east on Interstate 60 and turn south on, on Route 20, and then I turn east on Route 652 and, and until I come to the old homestead. Trees have grown up there now, and the old house was destroyed by fire some time ago. <coughs> but I get out of my car and, and I survey the property where the old home place used to be. And my brothers and my sisters, I remember that it was there that my mama and my daddy, eight boys and two girls, lived in an old three-room house. Mama and daddy slept in a combination master bedroom, living room, and den. There, there was a little small tin stove in the room where my parents slept. And in the winter, we would get our clothes hot and then run upstairs and jump in the bed because there was no heat in the rest of the house. My brother slept two and three to a bed, and every morning we'd wake up in, down in the middle of the bed like, like we done worked all night long, back tired and aching because the more mattress has fallen down into the middle of those springs. Sound like some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all some of y'all been there. We would lay in the bed at night and take a course in astronomy. We could count the stars, find the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. I know some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And many times our meals consisted of bologna and cornbread and some thickening gravy. Now, if you don't know about thickening gravy, you ask me after service and I'll tell you what it was. I, 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 I knew where I came from. I knew what I came from. We, we got indoor plumbing when I was in high school. It, it was tough when you had to go outdoors in the bathroom in the middle of the night. We got drinking water from a spring about two miles away. Used to have to go and take two buckets two or three times a day. I remember one day I went to the spring and got home with them two buckets of water and stumbled and fell into the kitchen. I had to go all the way back to the spring. I remember where I came from, folks. I remember my mama wrapping smoothing irons and putting them at the foot of her bed to keep her feet warm in the winter. In the winter time, I remember that the wind whistling through the house. And when it rained, my mama would set out pots and pans to catch the water as it rained down into the house. I remember where I came from, my brothers and sisters. And then God blessed us. He gave us a new house uh, and some indoor plumbing, uh, put a new carpet on the floor, gave us a telephone, help me Jesus, gave us a burning oil stove and put a color TV in the house, gave us a new car, and then we done run off and got where we came from. My brothers and my sisters, every now and then, every now and then, you need to go back to where you came from you, you, you need to take a course and look to see where you come from, how far God had led you, and who brought you over, and how you got over. My brothers and my sisters, he's brought us a mighty long way. Had it not been for the Lord on our side, we wouldn't be where we are today. You wouldn't be where you are today, had it not been for the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, I, I got I to gotta get out of here for you all. The, the, the psalmist the psalmist is talking about Christians growing like a cedar tree. He said, let me, let me, let me show you one other thing that he says here. Now, I, I thought this was powerful. Now, you may not, but I see when the root grows down in the mountain, 
it will strike some rock. And, 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 and it doesn't stop growing when it hits the rock. It, it, it goes around the rock. It hits another rock, that same root, and grows around that rock. It winds around the rock until it gets down to the water. And by the time it gets to the water, it's all wrapped around the rock. Somebody said that's what gives it its stick to what gives it its resiliency, which gives it its tenacity, what gives us the ability to stand so that when, when, when the old pine tree pops, when, when the poplar tree breaks and the maple tree dies and the oak tree falls, that old cedar tree goes all the way down to the ground, but then it comes all the way back up because it's, it's wrapped around the rock. It, 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 got, it got strong roots. Living, living in Atlanta, we used to get a lot of ice storms. But, and, and when that happens, you would see power lines down and cars overturned and sliding into each other. It, it, it really was a sight to see. And, and most of the time, there, there will be trees falling down everywhere. I, I, I don't know whether you've ever paid any attention, but next time you get a heavy rain or some ice and snow, I submit to you that, that the old pine tree will have fallen and the oak tree will be uprooted and the maple tree will have broken. But that old cedar tree, help me God, that old cedar tree will stand tall. There's something about that cedar tree because it gets anchored in the rock. And I just want to tell you tonight that if you get anchored in the rock, if you get anchored in Jesus, let the wind come. Let hail come. Let storms come. Let hell come. Let the devil fire his direct dots. As long as you're anchored in the rock, you can stand tall like that cedar tree because the rock is Jesus. The rock is Jesus. And you can't do anything but stand when you're anchored in Jesus, when you got Jesus on your side. Now, now after tonight, you will never look at a cedar tree the same again. See, see, Christians are to pattern their lives after this tree. Listen, listen. Uh, if you take two cedar trees and plant them close together, I mean, I mean, plant them close together and just let them grow. In time, the limbs on one tree will grow into the limbs on the other tree. And in time, they will interlock and overlap the limbs on one tree to the limbs on the other tree. And, and you won't be able to separate them without damaging the other tree. Don't you know that's the way church folks ought to be? Come on now. Don't you know that's the way we ought to be? That's how Christians ought to grow. We, we ought to be so close that one person can't have a problem without everybody having a problem. We, we, we ought to be so close that the devil doesn't have a license to come into the church and destroy a member of the church. Because when the devil comes in, everybody ought to gather together and jump on him. Because you see, when one person has a problem, everybody ought to have a problem. When, when the deacons got a problem, the trustees ought to have a problem. When a choir member has a problem, the missionaries ought to have a problem. When the usher board has a problem, the mayor ought to have a problem. If one member has a problem, everybody ought to have a problem. If the pastor has a problem, everybody ought to have a problem. We ought to be so close, so close that we hold each other up. See the tree. I'm going to leave you with this thought. If you get a chance and, and take a look at the cedar tree, don't give it a casual look. Take a hard, introspective view. Give it a critical examination. And you will notice that it doesn't even look like other trees. Y you will discover that the oak tree has, uh, has big, thick bark on the outside. The, the poplar tree has bark on the outside. The pine tree, you know the pine tree has this thick bark on the outside. But that old cedar tree has this little thin layer of skin. 
wrapped around the outside of the tree. And, 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 and you can almost tear it off with your hand. Now listen, now listen. If an insect penetrates the bark of an oak tree or a pine tree or a maple tree, the, 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 the insect will strike a nerve in that tree and the tree will die. Now, if the insect gets inside the cedar tree, help me, Jesus, the insect dies because the cedar tree, help me, Jesus, has that deadly sap. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The cedar tree, you see, that's, that's, why, that's why folks are lured to those cedar chests. Women put their minks and furs, I don't, I don't know whether y'all got in the minks or furs, rabbits and, and, and squirrel skin stuff. I don't, I don't know whether they got in, but they put them in them cedar chests because the sap in the wood protects against the intruder, protects against insects and moths and other intruders. There's a deadly sap that destroys the adversary. And my brothers and my sisters, all I'm trying to tell you tonight, all I'm trying to share with you this evening, is that you ought to put some, some stuff on the inside. It's okay to put some stuff on the outside. I don't have any problem with your putting some stuff on the outside. I, I, you, know, you know, you ought to look good on the outside. But why are you putting some stuff on the outside? Don't forget to put some stuff on the inside so that when Satan comes after you and Satan fires his fiery darts, there ought to be something on the inside that keeps you going when the storms are raging. There ought to be something on the inside that protects you when the rain comes and the storm comes. There ought to be something that keeps you standing in the time of storm. See, you see, when you can't see your way clear, there ought to be something down on the inside in the midst of trials and tribulations. There ought to be something down on the inside and down on the inside, there ought to be Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. There ought to be Jesus down on the inside. You ought to have Jesus on the inside. You ought to have Jesus in your life uh, when friends mistreat you and family talk about you. When friends mistake you, you ought to have something down on the inside. In the wee hours of the morning when you can't sleep, uh, the burdens are carrying are much too heavy, you ought to have Jesus down on the inside. When the job ends and you can't pay your bills, uh, you need Jesus. You need somebody down on the inside when folks talk about you and spread your name in the street and spread gossip in times of disappointment and despair, in times of pain and grief. When you think all hope is gone, you need Jesus down on the inside. Somebody is a witness in here tonight. You've got Jesus as your friend. You've got Jesus, and you ain't telling nobody about it because you and Jesus got something going on. Jesus will protect you in the storm. If you let him wrap you in his arms, he'll be your sword and shield. He'll be your shelter in the storm. He'll be your light in dark places. He'll walk with you. He'll talk with you. He'll tell you how it's done. He'll lift you up when you're down. He will move you and comfort you when you're grief. He will talk to you. He will help you. You can lean on Jesus, but you got to have him down on the inside. You got to have him down on the inside so you can talk to him and he can talk to you. You can listen to him and he can listen to you, but you got to have him down on the inside. And so in times, in times of trouble, when you can't see your way clear, you got to have something on the inside. Now, the pastor may do a good job of preaching, but you better have Jesus down on the inside. Church folks can help you out when you're in trouble, but only Jesus can make a way out of no way. Ah! Only Jesus can lift you up out of your troubles. Only Jesus can put some money in your pocket when you're broke. Only Jesus, the cedar tree, is awesome. And the psalmist says that Christians mm, ought to grow like the cedar tree. And then when you look at that last verse, he says, because Jesus is my rock. Mm, help me, Jesus. 
He said, Jesus is my rock, mm, my, my shield. He, he, he is my everything. When you got Jesus on the inside, nothing, nothing can bother you. <laughs> and the people of God said, amen. Amen. God bless you. God be with you. God smile on you. God care for you. Amen. Won't you stand? Won't you stand tonight? I think the choir is going to sing for us a little bit, but we, we, we could not leave tonight without offering you this Jesus. The Jesus that we've been talking about, who suffered and died for us. You, you need Jesus in your life. And if, and if you're here tonight and you don't have a church home, or, or you're looking for a place to worship, it's County Line. It's the place to be. And, 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 and so, so if, if you want to be in a place where you can be nurtured and loved and cared for, so this is your time. This is your opportunity. Jesus has made a way for you. You need Jesus in your life. You need God in your life. You, 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 you need a Bible verse that you can talk about every now and then. And you can get it right here in church. Yes. So the doors of the church are open. On this last night of the revival. If you're here tonight, won't you come? Come on, choir. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah.
tonight for the music this week come on let's praise god a little bit before we leave tonight we're not sure when we'll see each other again but god has been good this week and i praise god for you and i pray that he'll bless you that, that, that together you all might grow to be the kind of church you've been looking for for a long time but god will bless you mightily with your new life and your family and i just thank to god for you and know that i'll be praying for you We'll be talking about you in Atlanta, and I praise God for you. If you're ever in Atlanta, come visit us. We uh, we uh, worship each Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, and uh, we try to do what God asks us to do. So come be with us if you're ever in Atlanta. Thank you so much. I want to thank this choir again. Amen. Amen. They, uh, we, we had them in Atlanta in February, and Church hasn't been the same thing since they were there. So, but I praise God. Come on, let's pray mm -hmm. tonight as we leave. Holy God, you are God alone. You, you are the great God of the universe. You are the only God. You, you, you are the creator of the ends of the earth. And, and you saw fit to make us just a little lower than the angels and gave us a voice to sing your praise. And so we come tonight to thank you. Thank you for this revival. Thank you for your word this week. And thank you for your presence in this place. And thank you, God, that we know you better than we did you before. We, we thank you, God, for what you're about to do here on this corner. That, there, that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. And it does not enter into the hearts of men. What you plan to do for County Line. So we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. Keep us in your care. And now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his divine throne. To the one wise God, be glory, dominion, power, and authority, both now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 God bless you. God keep you. He's God alone.